Hey everybody and welcome to Fresh Light. Tonight we start a brand new series as we begin this brand new year of 2023 by looking at the topic of prayer. I believe that prayer is extremely important in, in the life of the believer, yet it's one of the things that we usually uh, put off the most. One of the things that's the most powerful for us, and yet if you're a believer in Jesus, you have to admit there's probably none of us that would like to say, man, I'm really happy with my prayer life. I'm satisfied with as much time as I spend with God. And so this thing that's the most powerful and the most important is the thing that sometimes we neglect the most. Martin Luther King, or not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther says this, he says, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. That's how important prayer is to us. And Martin Luther uh, was a person that at one point uh, is quoted as saying, if I don't spend four hours on my knees in prayer a day, uh, my day isn't complete. I don't know about you, I can't do that. I would love to be able to do that, but I can't be on my knees four hours a day praying. I wish I could, I've tried, it doesn't work. But that's okay because I think we need to realize two things. First of all, prayer is important, but the second part of that is uh, God understands us and he knows that we can't always do that. In fact, I love what Max Lucado says. He says, our prayers may be awkward, our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is the one, is, the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not on the one who says it, our prayers make a difference. And in a nutshell, what he's saying there is this. He's, you're not good at praying, I'm not good at praying. But you know what? It's not about how good we pray. It's about how good the person we're praying to is. And God understands that struggle. He understands how hard it is. You know, one of the things that I do is I like to uh, liken my prayer life, or liken prayer rather, to to the conversations that I have with my wife. Uh, and if you're not married, maybe it could be with a significant other or best friend. Uh, contact or work or whatever. Uh, but if you think of conversation, and that's what I want to talk about tonight, is conversational prayer. Uh, if you think about conversational prayer, it's about how you react, interact with other people. Uh, for example, like I say with my wife, you know what, we don't always sit down and have deep, wordy, formal um, conversations. That'd be weird. I mean, she and I talk a lot, but we don't sit down and um, look at each other and say, you know, hi, Mike, how are you today? You know, and if you think about our prayer life, if you're like me, sometimes I'll be saying something in prayer, and all of a sudden I realize I said something totally ridiculous. Uh, there's been times when I started to pray and I'd say, thank God for food. I'm not even eating at the table. Uh, you know, and, and so prayer doesn't have to be this formal thing where we put so much thought into it. Um, my wife and I, sometimes we just sit down and, and uh, we'll talk if we do that. Sometimes you do need to do that. You need to find that time to do that. There's other times where we just talk throughout the day. You know, we'll go out to eat and we'll chat a little bit and stuff. Um, but most of the time, the conversations I have with my wife are not the formal sit down, uh, look each other in the eye, and chat. It's little things throughout the day that we do, little things throughout the day that we say to each other. Um, just you know, expressing our feelings, expressing our thoughts, expressing uh, how our day went, expressing things like that. Oh, and one other thing that we do, we say, I love you a lot. A lot. In fact, just out of the blue, sometimes she'll say, I love you, honey, or I'll say, I love you, honey. And of course, you always wait for that return where if you don't get, I love you, honey, back, you know you're in trouble, right? But we will we just talk that way. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in prayer and about how it has to be that we we miss the opportunity to just chat with Jesus. Uh, one of my favorite uh, writers is John uh, Eldridge, and one of the things he talks about is just having conversations with Jesus. Uh, imagine him in the car beside you. Imagine him walking down the hall with you or sitting at the break room table or at your desk or whatever. He's there and he wants to hear from you. He doesn't want to hear the, uh, you know, necessarily so many times in prayer, we have prayer requests and we have uh, opportunities to share prayer requests and we just pray to God and ask him for things. Can you imagine what it would be like in a relationship if all you did is talk to that other person and ask them for something, how do you think that relationship would go? It wouldn't go very well, I don't think, because that person would look at you and think, oh boy, here we go, what are we going to get asked for now? Jesus wants to hear our requests, don't get me wrong on that. But he also wants to just hear us. He wants to hear our voice. He wants us to talk with him. 
he calls us friends. Friends don't talk to each other in King James language. Friends don't talk to each other in formal language. Friends just chat. And I think some of the times we need to remember that prayer is just that. It's chatting with our best friend, and my best friend is Jesus. That's how I talk with my wife. And I think that we need to learn how to talk with Jesus the way we do with our best friend, our spouse, whatever other significant others that we have. Just having those conversations. Sure, you need to have those times of, of uh, formality. Um, but you and I both know we've been in situations where uh, you listen to somebody pray and they're praying in King James language or using all these big words that you don't even know the meaning of. Uh, or, or at a, you know, I remember um, grandpa, one of my grandpas, uh, we would sit around the table at Thanksgiving and it was kind of a joke with us kids that we hoped grandpa wouldn't get into one of his long prayers because the food would all be cold because he would just start praying for everything under the sun and there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes we put so much emphasis into that that we forget that we're just talking to somebody that loves us. So Jesus talks about the fact that we need to be quiet before him, first of all. So one of the things is we need to learn to talk to God, but we also need to be quiet with him. I had a, was reading a devotional this last week, and I loved what the author said. And he said something that really struck a chord with me. He said, you know, sometimes in prayer we go to God, and he wants to talk back, and we don't give him a word in. You know what people are like. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and they just they hog the whole thing and you can't get a word in edgeways you try but you can't because they just keep talking and talking and talking I think sometimes God thinks that about us that's why in the book of Psalms Psalm 46 10 God says be still <laughs> please be still will you listen to me be still and know I'm God so one of the things in our prayer conversational prayer is that we need to remember we need to learn we need to practice it's a practice it's a discipline to just be quiet before god and allow him to speak to us just sit quietly and just focus maybe using a scripture verse uh, maybe just thinking through the day but always with jesus in mind and have him thinking of us so so first of all prayer we need to be quiet listen second thing we need to do about prayer is remember that it's conversation not dictation you know, we're just talking. You don't use formal language with friends. Don't have to use formal language with God. He just wants to hear you talk. And then also, prayer doesn't have to be long. It's interesting. Some of the most famous, most uh, effective prayers in the Bible were very, very short prayers. For example, when Jesus was in the boat, the boat was being destroyed by the storm. Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat. And the disciples were terrified because they were all going to die and here's Jesus sleeping in the back of the boat and they wake him up and they say, hey Jesus don't you care we're going to die and Jesus wakes up and looks around and goes oh you guys of little faith peace be still that was his prayer and the ocean stopped the wind stopped it became calm it became a beautiful night out on the water Jesus didn't pray a long lengthy prayer what about the time that he raised Lazarus from the dead he knew Lazarus was going to die he went to the tomb and he prayed, and the long prayer that he said was, Lazarus, come out. And he did. Another one that I like is the story of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is an Old Testament prophet. And he had uh, had to go into the king to ask king for permission to go back to Jerusalem. And he had prayed about it for three weeks and just trying to figure out, it was kind of like, God, when should I do this? And, and the king gave him the opening that he needed to be able to uh, ask for permission for this journey that he wanted to take. And uh, it's really cool because in very couple, I think it's in chapter 2 of Jeremiah. Anyway, uh, Jeremiah says, and I prayed and I said to the king. And I think that's cool because it doesn't say I, I, I left the room, I went out and I had a word of prayer and I came back in. And he says, I prayed and I talked to the king. He was so prayed up in the whole situation that when it actually came to that time, it was just kind of like, okay, God, here you go. Give me the words that I need to have to go into this situation. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. It can be just be God help me. It can be just Jesus give me strength. It can be just Jesus give me the words to say in this situation. You know what's cool about that with the human mind, and I've had this happen, maybe you have too, is that you can be talking to somebody and you can tell that they're really struggling with something and you want to say something. And, and while you're talking to them, you've got the eye contact and everything going. You can be praying. You can say, Jesus, what do you want me to say to this situation? Jesus, how can I have understanding in this situation? We can do that. And so prayers don't have to be long. They don't have to be lengthy. 
I think sometimes we think we don't have enough time to pray because we think that prayer takes a lot of time. That's good if you can do that, but if you can't, if it's just driving out of the driveway saying, Lord, help me to have a safe trip to work. Uh, Lord, help me know how to handle this situation. He wants to hear that. But I think part of the reason, part of the thing we need to remember with that particular thing is that those are the things that happen as a result of other prayers that you've made. So if you pray for God to God for strength in a particular situation and that situation comes up and you say, Lord, help me with it, it goes kind of goes back to what you've already prayed about. So conversational prayer doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be big words. It doesn't have to be to follow a little pattern. You know, there's some churches that every single week they say the Lord's Prayer, and I would put money on it that most of them don't even think about what those words mean. In fact, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do a study on the Lord's Prayer, because if you do a study on the Lord's Prayer, you find out it's really, really amazing, all the things that are in there. But most people just recite it. It's like what Jesus says in the book of Matthew, where he says, you know, don't go into public and just say, battling a bunch of words you know uh, don't just say a bunch of things think about what you're saying because the heart of our prayer is far more important than the words for our prayer and the last thing is prayer should be honest you can be honest with God I remember one time I'm not proud of this by the way I can remember one time that I had really prayed hard for something and it didn't happen and I drove home, and I was screaming at God. I blew it. I had a temper tantrum. I'll admit that. I was so angry. I was so upset. Why did you let me down? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Like I said, I'm not proud of that. But what I, one of the things that I thought about with that is you can be honest with God. And I'm sure he was just sitting in the car seat beside me. Just, you go ahead and vent, Mike. I got gotcha. you. The psalmist writes about that. Psalm chapter 5, verses 1 2. Listen to David. Listen to what he says. He says, Oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help. My King and my God, I pray to no one but you. In other words, what David is saying here, he's saying, Oh, help me. Father, will you please listen to me? I've been praying. I've been pouring my heart out. I can't sense your presence. Will you please pay attention to me? Do you see me groaning here? I cry to you because you're my king and you're my God and you're the only one I can go to. So we need to be honest. We need to not worry about how long it's going to take. We don't need to worry about the words we use. Uh, we don't need to uh, be necessarily uh, using the big long language. All we need to do is just spend some time with God. That's what conversational prayer is. I believe that one of the most important things we can do as Christians in the 20, in uh, 2023 is to have a strong prayer life. Not just a strong prayer life with ourselves, but a strong prayer life within groups. And that's another thing we need to realize with prayer. And we'll be talking about this in the next couple of weeks, is the fact that there's personal prayer and there's corporate prayer, just like there's personal worship and corporate worship. Tonight, I'm talking about personal prayer. This is between you and God. This is those times when you get together with your best friend, with your with your spouse, with your partner, whatever. Block out everything else and just have a chat with the person that loves you more than anybody else, the person that died for you, the person that can walk through every single situation with you. That's what conversational prayer is about. Hopefully, you'll do what I did and learn how to do that. It takes practice. But try conversational prayer. To spend some time talking with Jesus throughout your day. Let him know how you're feeling. Just have those. Be careful about that. Sometimes you start praying out loud in public. People might think you're a little strange. But uh, spend that time just talking with Jesus. Just a little walk with Jesus. Let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you for tonight and for the time that I could be able to share with my friends about uh, talking with you. I pray that you would help us because you prayed for us and you wanted us want us to pray back with you and so many times we fail. Uh, but I thank you that our prayers aren't dependent on us, but they're dependent on you. And I ask that you would help us to be strong, help us to be faithful in talking with you, sharing with you, and just realizing that what you want more than anything else from us is just to hear our conversation each and every day. Thank you again for that. I pray that you keep us safe. And I pray these things in your name. Amen. <clears throat> hey, thanks for watching. 
And uh, if you don't have a church to attend, we invite you to come to Zion between Lock Frederick and Cumberland. You can check us out on the website. And if you are far away but you don't have a church to attend, and somebody just wrote to me last week and said, hey, I found a new church I'm going to, it's yours. And she lives in Florida, I think. Anyway, if you want to watch us online, we're online at 10 o'clock. We'd love to have you join us. We're going to be spending some time in prayer this month there as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night. And if you're up in our heart of the woods, stay safe out there. It's nasty.